The funny thing about this camera, uh, I may have to um, hit start and stop or replace a battery or, um, okay. you know, as it goes. Record right there, right there, right next yeah. to my Warcraft. Yeah. yeah. That was bad. <laughs> I bought that a long time ago. I wanted to make it like... Footage and rolling on audio. Um, so, and you just look at me and you... Yeah. Pro, you don't need it. Yeah. Um, so, I figured we would just start... How many pages of notes do you have for this? Just one? <laughs> just, uh, just one page of yeah. entry? Two? Feel. Wow, you've been doing some research. You've been doing some homework. <laughs> <laughs> Did you write all that during like your time at the airport yeah, yesterday? Yeah. Uh, okay, I had all this in my mind. Okay, that's good. Out, so. That's good. I mean, I'm here to answer whatever questions you want. Cool. My past, cool. my history, how if you want, how I started. Yeah. Well, that'd so. be a great place to start. Like, you know, like, uh, when did you, what was the first video game you ever played? The first video game I ever played was like what was it uh super mario brothers the the one where the first one where you just run across the screen the first mario brothers the first one that's the first that's actually the first game that got me addicted to like nintendo games yeah. just made me a, a nintendo player not like any like xbox or PlayStation well, they, or sega actually it's just it was between super nintendo and sega back then it was just nintendo nintendo so that's cool that's yeah cool. super mario brothers and then contra yeah, Contra. Contra, classic, Contra. Nice, very cool. Yeah. Um, with uh, did you um, have any like preference early on, or, or did your I guess how did you get access to it? Did your parents buy you one for Christmas? Or? I remember having an old Nintendo. It was just like in the in the attic or something like that. I think my 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 parents, my dad was playing Nintendo, and he <laughs> and I saw it. I started wanting to play. I think it was just the old Nintendo. It wasn't like the one before that. I think Nintendo was where I started, yeah. the foundation right. of gaming. And then uh, did, did you kind of, I guess, like you moved along with other games and stuff like that? And, um, did you did you have like a thing for puzzles early on? I wasn't. I think the only puzzle game that I really liked was probably Tetris. I'm, I'm a big fan of Tetris. I always like to play Tetris, play the music, you know, the, the old fashioned Tetris music. But other than that, uh, I'm not. I wasn't really into puzzle games, and then during like my high school and stuff, I started getting into like RPG games and whatnot. And always, always liked finding games like Street Fighter. I went to the arcades a lot, played Street Fighter, pretty much just Street Fighter at the arcades. But other than that, it was just like Tetris, Street Fighter, uh, mostly like uh, and RPG games. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Did your uh, like? It sounds like your dad actually played these games too. So he was it was okay for you to play. Yeah, my dad, um, I think the, his favorite game was Dr. Mario. So uh, when he got Dr. Mario, we, we were all competitive and we wanted to see who was the best. So everybody was playing Dr. Mario, trying to be the best. And I came out top. I was the best Dr. Mario player. <laughs> uh, so this is like your sister was playing? Like yeah, my sister. My sister was playing. My brother was playing. I was playing. My dad was playing. We all tried to beat each other Dr. Mario. And I, I ultimately like was the best at Dr. Mario. Nice. Um, so the uh, when you um, when you were in school, was this like something that you could like play with other kids, or did were you did you make friends easily in school? Yeah, I I mean I had a close group of friends that um, we all would uh, play play together, play video games together after school. You know, uh, Dragon Ball Z. I think uh, Dragon Ball Z three. It was on the Super Nintendo. We would play that game a lot. You know, it was in Japanese, but we didn't care. We were all big Dragon Ball fans, just played <laughs> Dragon Ball Z, uh, yeah, pretty much just like hung out with a group of friends, had a lot of friends in high school, it wasn't like, it wasn't bad or anything. No, no. And what did you, how, how was your high school experience? From playing video games or what? Um, like just like growing yeah, up? I guess growing up, yeah. Yeah, just, uh, well high school experience was like, when I was in high school, it was just, I don't know, I, I think I played a lot of StarCraft, but then I didn't, I just got through class, I didn't, I was paying attention. I was a good student, you know, 3.5 GPA, wasn't wasn't bad, you know. Just just got done with homework and went straight to video games. Played for hours and hours until the next day. Studied, played video games, and repeat. <laughs> I wasn't like I didn't go out and do like outdoor activities or anything. Mostly like when I had free time, I'd play video games. And when did you um, did you uh, 
hear about Super or, or sixty four? Like, uh, did you? Was that one of your first ones? That uh, there we go. Um, like, did you did you want the sixty four when you first saw it? Or uh, sixty four was kind of weird. Like, I'd never seen sixty four for before, and I think my cousin actually brought over Nintendo sixty four. Or, uh, yeah, they brought it over his Nintendo 64 and we started playing Smash Bros. 64 for the first time. And then I, I just, we just fell in love with it because it was just like all these Nintendo characters, some that we've never seen before, some that we've heard, and it was just like a new fighting game. And it was just like a, a party game. So we, you know, played for hours and hours and endless nights playing, you know, teams, free for all, whatever, you know. I think I started off with playing Kirby at first because he was super easy. I just had multiple jumps to come back. And then, ultimately, later, I, I switched to Captain Falcon because he was, had more combo potential. So then I started using Captain Falcon, and, you know, I... And it was just like a party game. We just stayed up all night playing, just had fun. What do you think when the the new hotness went, came on the scene and uh, Melee came out? Did you did you like it enough when you first saw it? When I saw Melee, actually, we didn't, we didn't have a GameCube at first, so we were still playing 64. Like, I think I didn't start playing Me Melee to, like maybe like three or four or five months after it came out. But we were still playing 64 um, before Melee came out. But when I saw Melee, I was, you know, the graphics were a lot better. It's a lot, it's a, a bigger, faster pacer game. Um, it was just different. It was different. Yeah. Yeah. So you weren't necessarily sold on it right away? No, I wasn't sold on Melee. I was still a 64 player. I mean, I, I mean, just within our group of friends, and we just played 64. Yeah. Uh, we didn't really play Melee until later on yeah, yeah. so when when you did start picking up melee and it kind of was it obvious that you had like a natural talent for it or that you were the best in your, in your group well when we first played melee uh i think when i first played melee it was at my friend's house um playing the even gripping the uh me, or the uh, gamecube controller was different compared to the n64 controller and uh you know, it took a while to get used to it, but yeah, I was always good at Smash Brothers, so it just carried on from 64 to Melee, and I was just starting to uh, be better than most of my friends in the group. You know, they would always try to team up on me, three versus one, because we never played one versus one, we always played free for all. Yeah. And you know, the wild stages are on, it was, it was crazy. <laughs> just the stages that, that would be random and just like kill you off the bat. Yeah. Yeah. Did you ever play on like, you know, I guess, Pokefloats, it's a great example. Um, yeah, we played on all the stages, like Pokefloats to to even Jungle Japes with a little rock in the corner, to like uh, the, the the Captain Falcon stage. Uh, I don't forget what it's called. Oh, um, uh, Grand, Grand Grand something. Yeah. Grand Tur That's not Grand Turismo. <laughs> Is it Grand Turismo? No, it's not yeah, Grand Turismo. Like blue. Blue blue something. Yeah. The one with all the the the. The uh, the cars they had to jump from car to car and it go it would go diagonal down, that was that was, that was a crazy stage. <laughs> yeah, that was nuts. Um, so when you uh, let's see here. Oh yeah. So what was your? Did you go to a first tournament? Like I know that uh, and this will be where we cut to that. Okay. Um, well. Yeah. Well. Uh, I'll tell you the story. Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, the first time, actually, um, I didn't own a GameCube. I mean, my family was relatively poor. We were still playing 64 before Melee came out. And um, Christmas came around, and my sister, uh, she had a job. She was in um, college, and she actually bought us a, a GameCube for Christmas. And Smash Bros. came with it, because that was the game at the time. It came with the, the um, system. And uh, I was so happy since I opened it. It was the GameCube. I couldn't believe it. And uh, she brought us there was one original GameCube controller that came in the box and then she bought us like three fake imitation GameCube controllers. They were like huge, fat, thick ones and you couldn't even smash with them. And yeah, we ended up playing uh, Melee and practicing um, uh, off, off those crappy controllers. And I obviously I didn't get the good controller because my brother would always take it. And I was still beating with a crappy controller, but um, that's when we first um, started playing Melee a lot more than 64. We put, pretty much put 64 in like the closet and started playing Melee from there and on. Yeah, yeah. Did you um, did you know anything about like the tournament scene or have anything like that in mind or? Uh, I knew of like the the there's a local game game uh, game store 
uh, called Game Square nearby, and you see like they would host like tournaments here and there, other games, and then uh, we heard that Smash Brothers was going to be a tournament. Uh, there was going to be a tournament for Smash Brothers, so we all signed up for it, and that was the first tournament I actually entered, and it was a free for all tournament. It was items, crazy rules, uh, crazy brackets. I think the first place got like a a, a gift certificate for like fifty dollars. Something along the lines, but uh, hell, I entered. Nice. And how was it? How did, how did people uh, react to you? When I first got there, there was like word on the street where you know I was like the best player there, and people were already scared. They're like, "Oh man, that guy's good." They heard from like high school and stuff, from like, you know, it, from people with just hearsay and stuff. So, whatever group I got, like it was four four man free for all, Yoshi Story, whatever. Everybody would team up on me. Like from the get go, I'd see like four guys jump jump on me and try to like take me down no matter what what it was they'd suicide their stock just take one of my stocks and it was yeah they just they just all ganged up on me yeah. did that help you like did you're like oh jesus oh god and like, <laughs> <laughs> when they first ganged up on me i was just like oh man what, what, what should i do like i was i was going running for the running to to the ledge going left right i was just like beating the crap out of everybody i mean at the end of the, the round i'd have the most kills and whatnot and I mean, there's items going on, things flying left. I was trying to avoid everything um, by then, you know, but yeah, that, that, that kind of made me think, like, maybe this game isn't supposed to be played in a, in a free-for-all four-player four because I, I believed I could take, I could have taken any of them one versus one. Yeah. yeah. Did, did you, but you ended up, like, did you end up winning that? It was the first tournament where I actually ended up winning in a, in a four-man free-for-all. I actually, I couldn't believe it. I actually won. And it felt really good. Like, like I played a lot of games. I mean, obviously, I knew I was good at the game, but I I didn't know I was like able to win tournaments. And that's I guess that's where I kind of started like thinking that maybe I can uh, compete uh, in this game. Nice. A little quick interlude. Thank you for being an excellent uh, interviewee and, and repeating that back to me. <laughs> um, well, cool. That's excellent. Um, We're gonna have to edit some stuff. Oh, out. don't worry. You, you can edit it well. Then. Oh yeah, it's, I'll, it's, it's gonna be a lot less editing than M2K for sure. <laughs> um, did you have any strategy at first? Like, or was there anything? Like, or did you? How did you play the game? Did you have a way of going into it? Well, do, do we discuss like? Why I picked Martha and all that stuff? Yeah, no, no, we, we haven't. Let's, let's talk about that. Yeah, I mean, because we went straight to the tournament, and I, I didn't. We didn't discuss like what character I use yeah. or whatnot. Yeah, let's just talk about like your your discovery of Marth. Okay, so um, when we first when I first played Melee, I mean, it, we had the original roster and stuff. So it's most of the characters from '64, you know, and I was like, I wasn't, I was happy to see Captain Falcon was there, so I went straight to Captain Falcon when I first played. And he was a way different. He was a way different character from the '64 Captain Falcon and the Melee. Like I remember in '64, I'd run up with Captain Falcon and up smash and be his uppercut. And this version, like in order to do an uppercut, you'd do a forward B. That was like one of his signature moves. So it it was it was it was different because I couldn't do combos the way I did in '64 with Captain Falcon. So uh, so you know we looked online and we saw all these you know different characters and. We're like, oh, this is how you unlock this character. This is how you unlock this character. So I actually made my brother play to unlock all the characters because he wanted to play anyway. So we ended up unlocking all the characters. And then one morning, I, I remember it was like really early or really late, and he unlocked Marth. And he woke me up. I was like, dude, look at this new character. So I was like, oh, man, that guy looks badass. So I, I eventually picked him up. And when I started playing, playing him for the first time, it just felt, felt like I was connected with him. Like I knew... How to how to maneuver with him? His aerials were great, and I I just went with it, and he was, he just fit perfectly with me. I started using him. Nice. Did you have a? Why did you pick uh, red as your color? Uh, I picked red. Uh, I was known as a red Marth. Um, I picked red throughout my uh, whole career because um, my favorite color is red. Technically, like I didn't want to. I wanted to be different. I guess I wanted to stand out. Red uh, red Marth looked pretty cool. And it's kind of like uh, the blood stains on his sword after every every person I kill. So I so that's one of the main reasons I picked uh, uh, Red Marth. Nice, nice. That's cool. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so let's see, Red Marth. 
So you, you didn't choose uh, Fox as your um, secondary at that at that point, right? It was just Marth. No, I used I just used Marth um, for the most part. Uh, I didn't use a secondary. It was just all Marth, no matter gotcha. what. Gotcha. Now, at this point in time, it's kind of like two thousand two, two thousand three. Um, was this? Uh, but at this early stage, was the Ken combo in play at all, or had you already made that tra like transition from uh, the sixty four Falcon into Mark? Uh, the Ken combo was not in play. I mean, nobody knew about the Ken combo. I mean, the only person that knew about the Ken combo was me, because <laughs> I sixty four version uh, Captain Falcon would have a a Ken combo in sixty four where he would up tilt them and then down tilt them, and they would go up and then down. And I tried to in implement that in melee. And I couldn't do that with any other characters in Melee except for Marth. Because when you did a forward air with Marth, they would fly up. And then you can do a down air after that and they'd fly down. So that's the transition that I made from the Cat to Falcon 64 version into the um, GameCube Melee version from Falcon to Marth. So then that's how the Ken combo originally started. Mm. And when I did that, um, people wouldn't be able to recover. and. Um, I basically invented the Ken combo and people started catching on to that and calling it out every single time I would do that. Nice, nice. Let's, um, let's place you within where your, where your region is. Like you, you grew up in, where, where'd you grow up? Um, I grew up in Orange County, um, pretty much uh, around, all, all, all in Orange County. Um, I didn't step foot outside of Orange County. Um, Anywhere else, LA, whatever. All this, all this, all the players I played was usually down here. My group of friends in high school, uh, my brother. So like, there wasn't a big community or anything quite yet. Down there was no. There was just. It was just. There was no nothing. Just us. Just, just. I was basically the only like the only person that I knew that was playing Smash Brothers competitively at the time in Orange County. Nice. Nice. So when you went on to. Uh, how did you find out about Smash Bros? Was that something that was, um, you know, your brother found out first? Or? So actually, uh, when, when we were just playing Smash Brothers, whatever, um, I won that first tournament at the local Game Square tournament, and they, be, they declared me Game Square national champion. So, uh, <laughs> so after that, my brother was uh, looking for tournaments online, and I was talking about like not playing in a free for all, four player free for all, and uh, we were actually getting to the one versus ones. And he actually went online and he discovered uh, Smash Brothers, my brother, Mana Cloud. And uh, you discovered, uh, you said Smash Brothers too. Oh, I, my, Smash Wars? yeah, my, my brother, Mana Cloud, actually discovered Smash Sports. And um, he saw Matt Deasy posting, um, hosting his tournament TG3, TG4, and was telling me about, it, like, oh, you have to go to this tournament. You can probably win it. You know, you, you're so good. So that's how uh, we discovered Smash Boards. Nice. And cause, uh, tell me a little bit more about the Matt DZ character. What was he all about? And how did you get involved? Matt, in Matt DZ was a, was a weird character, actually. Uh, he uh, he was from NorCal, and he wanted he was he was a moderator in Smash Boards, and he was all about competitive uh, gaming. Um, he wanted Smash Brothers to be like Street Fighter, you know, at Evo and Tekken and all that stuff. I mean, he played Tekken competitively. And then when Smash Brothers came out, he wanted Smash Brothers to be competitive as any other fighting game out there. So he started hosting tournaments and stuff, like, and and um, posting on Smash Boards, which everybody would see, and you know he would uh, be successful at it, at it. And uh, Matt Jeezy was a, a Fox player, and actually my brother would go on Smash Boards and he'd make a, you know typical scrub posts saying, "I'm the best Smash Smash Brothers player in the world. Nobody can beat me. I'm the best," you know, and. After my brother did that, or he he did he said that I was the best. My brother is the best. Uh, nobody can beat him. He's a game score national champion. And uh, Matt DZ saw that post and he was just laughing his ass off because you know every every scrub does that. <laughs> so Matt DZ saw that and he was like, oh look at this another scrub. And and you know I wasn't I was just a, a small fish in a in a pond. I was I didn't know anything about the ocean yet. So uh, Matt DZ you know. He saw that post and he actually contacted my brother on AM afterwards and wanted to, to do a money match. Nice, nice. And he actually, uh, at, the, at this time, I guess, Jeremy, who was, who was the biggest guy in, uh, in actually the West Coast? Actually, the, the best player on the West Coast at the time was uh, Reciferous, uh, Jeremy Fremlin. 
and he was a part of Matt Deasy's crew, and he was a sheet player. And you know, obviously, they were the best players then. I was I was a no-namer, never heard of. Uh, they they knew about Smashboards. They knew about the techniques coming out. People would share information on Smashboards, so they knew about. They practically thought they knew almost everything currently current at the game at the time. So if someone else you know stepped in from the outside, they they would think that they were better than them. So so Reciferous was uh, I think number one at the time, and then uh, his brother Adam was number two, and then Matt Easy was probably number three at the time. Yeah. So like. He, they were kind of like expecting to go in here and just like destroy you, right? So yeah, after my brother did the money match after with Matt Deasy, um, Reciferous got on the bandwagon too. They thought it was going to be easy money. So, you know, they they also challenged me to a money match because you know my brother was talking about you know hyping me up on Smashboards, saying how good I was, and they're like, oh, there's no way this kid could be good. He's never he's, he's he's never heard of Smashboards before. So they actually went online. They started money matching. And then twenty-five dollars became fifty dollars. Fifty dollars became a hundred dollars, and then eventually it came to two hundred dollars. Two hundred dollar money match off the bat. Like, I mean, I to tell you the honest truth, I didn't even have the money at the time, and I still money matched them. That's how confident like I was at, at, at the game. So I didn't. I mean, I was a poor kid. Didn't have that much money, <laughs> but they money matched me for that much, and I didn't even have the money. And I said, let's do it. Let's money match. I didn't know if I were to lose, I wouldn't know I would do probably borrow money from my parents or something, but but at the time I said, Hey, bring it, let's do it. Nice, nice. <laughs> so they came down and they, they actually came down to, to, to fight you here. Yeah, the first time I fought uh, Matt Deasy and Reciferous was actually at my house. I mean, uh, they actually drove down like six, seven hours, um, uh, car ride from uh, NorCal to SoCal. and. Um, they, uh, I think, I think we went over the rules online. I mean, they they were using totally different rules. Um, I think they wanted items on all these stages that were on. I didn't really care. I said, "Come down here, let's do it." You know, they they were. I didn't practice with items beforehand. I just said, "Okay, come on down. Let's money match in my house. Um, uh, let's see who wins." So what happened when they came down? So they first came down here. Uh, I think I played Reciferous first. Excuse me. I got a little burp. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> okay. Okay, so when Reciferous, um, Adam and Matt Deasy first came down, uh, I played Reciferous first, best of, I think it was best of seven. And uh, he was like doing all these advanced techniques, like wave dashing and, and catching items on air. I mean, who who knew you could catch items on air and using all these, I mean, using all these like items that he was like really good with, like the sword beam, and it was and and every single item I got, I just pick it up. I would just pick it up and throw it at him. Like I didn't know what they did. You know, I didn't know how to grab items on air. When a pokeball came down or dropped down, I would see him like grab, jump in the air and grab it and just throw it at me. And I'd have to wait till the items like landed on the ground so I could run over there and grab it, and uh, and then I'd be able to use it. And then. The funny thing is, like, what really shocked me was when, like, a bomb bomb came down and I'd grab it and I'd throw it at him and he'd air dodge and, like, re grab it. And I was, I was, I was like, how did you do that? How did you do that? But I ended up beating Reciferous, like, the best player out of nowhere. Like, I came out of nowhere and I beat him. And then they were all shocked. Matt Deasy and Reciferous just say, so they looked at each other and they were like, it was priceless. They were like, how did this kid beat, beat me? He's not even part of Smashboards. Like, he came out of nowhere. So then I ended up playing um, a Jeremy, his brother afterwards, uh, a Luigi player, and he was wave dashing. He was like sliding left and right. I was, and I was like, I was a little amazed. Like, how does this Luigi move so fast? He was like sliding left and right and, and like spamming his like C stick to down smash and stuff. And, and you hadn't seen like that, I've, uh, I've never dashing. I've never seen any of these um, advanced techniques before. Like I said, I was a small fish in a, in a, in a small pond. I didn't know about like the sharks and and the whales out there. I just knew what I knew. I just, I just had to rely on my instincts to take me through, and I ended up beating um, Reciferous and Adam. So I beat him for the first time, and then and it was a funny thing because Matt Deasy is like, "Oh, okay, I guess I'm next." And when I fought Matt Deasy, like that was a totally new experience for me too because it was a totally different style. Like Matt Deasy would pick Corneria and then run to the one side of the chip and just constantly spam lasers at me 
and I couldn't, I couldn't hit him. Every single time I'd approach him, he'd run to the other side and shoot more lasers at me and build up my percent. And then once I'd get high enough, he'd just try to run in there and like smash, up smash me or some, something and I'd die. And uh, I, I realized like I had to adapt to that. So um, I found out that once I grabbed Matt Deasy, he wasn't able, wasn't able to run. So once I grabbed him, I was able to hit him. So I just went on from there. And I eventually ended up beating Matt Deasy. Nice. So you almost single-handedly defeated our whole crew that had come down there to beat you. I basically single-handedly de defeated Matt Deasy's whole crew when they came down there out of nowhere, you know, just coming out of the blue. I'd never heard of Smash Bros. before, or Smash Boards before. Um, and they were all, they were all like shocked. They were all shocked. But the funny thing is after I beat them all, they said, um, I said, well, am I the best now? I, I asked them, and I'm like, I beat you guys. Aren't you guys the best? I beat you guys. Does, does it not make me the best now? And Matt Deasy said, no. Just because you beat us in a money match doesn't make you the best. You have to, you have to actually win you know, the, the, the biggest tournament at the time, which is like, you have to win TG4. I host TG4, you have to win that. that. That's what makes you the best. So I was like, oh, okay, I guess I'll have to go to TG4 and win that. And, and, and Matt Deasy was laughing. He was like, there's little chance that you're going to win TG4. <laughs> nice, nice. Now, I did, we didn't bring this up the other night, but um, there was another gentleman out there who um, who was known in, the, in Southern California. I think it was Southern California. Mm -hmm. His name was the Sultan of Samitude. He was from NorCal. NorCal. Sultan. <laughs> yeah, tell me a little bit about this. Uh, Sultan of Samitude. Sultan of Samitude was actually a part of Matt DG's crew. He was like, he was probably the biggest shit talker on Smash Boards at the time. And he was a little kid. Um, he was a Falco player. And he was just like, after I beat Reciferous, Adam, and Matt DZ, um, I think they were hosting like little bi weekly tournaments up there. And Sultan of Samitude would, um, was able to beat like Reciferous and Adam too and, and Matt DZ with his Falco. And he'd go online and talk mad trash. Mad, mad trash. Like, oh, I'm the best. You use Marth. Marth sucks. He's not even top tier. Things like that. And uh, it actually went through pages and pages of Smash Boards to the point where I'm like, dude, let's money match. Once I get to TG4, let's money match 50 bucks. Loser shuts up, gives him, gives, gives the other uh, the money and just, you know, be done with it. Because, I, I mean, that was the first time I've, I've seen, like, shit talk on Smash Boards. Yeah, yeah. And so when, when you got there and, and I mean... This was hyped up as like one of the biggest, like you know, early on, like uh, super matches between two two uh, incredibly good guys. Yeah. Like, I mean, but early on, I guess. In, yeah. In early on, uh, Sultan of Sam Two was the best Falco on the West Coast, and there was there was basically no Marth players out there except for White Rob, but he I and mean, his his Marth wasn't as good as mine. Um, uh, but when I first got to TG Four, I mean, it was. It was hosted in Matt Deasy's house. He lived in a C-story house. It's Matt Deasy's parents' house, and <laughs> I could. I imagine the first time I got in there it was like the stench was like horrendous. Like I didn't have any tournament experience. I thought it was going to be hosted like more professionally. I don't know about underground tournaments. You know, I thought it was going to be like Evo, where they hosted it like you know at a auditorium or something where there's there's like stages and whatnot. But it was hosted at Matt Deasy's house. Like I saw all these smashers. He was housing like most of them, so they were like, I saw him sleeping on the ground, and I was like walking in there, I'm like trying to avoid smashers, like bodies and whatnot. I remember I see like nothing but all these TVs set, uh, uh, set it up, and people were just playing Smash. Like, people were playing Smash. And then all of a sudden, when I got in there, um, people were, were awaiting the hype of me versus Sam, because they've heard of me, like Matt Deasy and Reciferous were telling people about me, like how, you know, how I was, so they wanted to see it um, in live, so. Everybody cleared the stages, and Matt Deasy had a big screen TV, and, and I, uh, I played Salt in the Samitude. Nice. Now how did that go? How did that match end up? Um, I actually prepared for that. Um, uh, I knew he was a Falco player. Um, there wasn't any videos and stuff. YouTube wasn't around then. So I knew he was a Falco player, so my brother, uh, Manicloud, was also a Falco player too, so I got a lot of practice off that. And I actually found out before that that um, you can toss Falco and Fox up in the air, and then we grab them, like to toss them like a hacky sack, and just keep on doing it over and over. So uh, Sam didn't know about that. So when I when I first played Sam, um, I started chain grabbing him, like he couldn't move, and 
and I ended up beating him because he didn't know about the chain grab, and that was totally new to them. So I beat Sam. Uh, he was he was on the urge of even crying because he was a little kid. He lost fifty bucks. I mean, if you were fourteen years old and you lost fifty bucks, you'd be <laughs> you'd be devastated. I mean, if I lost fifty bucks and that was like I think sixteen at a time, I'd be devastated. So uh, <laughs> I beat Sam, and he he shut up. And uh, he went away. Did he get some more respect for you at all after this was over? Like, no, they he Sam did not respect me uh, afterwards. I mean, throughout the whole tournament, um, he was just in the corner dogging me the whole entire time. He's a pissed off little kid. That uh, I took his money, you know, uh, the whole entire time. I don't I don't think I got respect from him. Yeah. So you essentially invented chain grabbing right there, right? Yeah, I believe the first time that chain grabbing ever happened in a tournament where people actually saw was when I, my match against Sam, uh, Salt and Samitude at TG4. And I don't think anybody heard about chain grabbing then. Um, really, yeah, nobody, nobody actually chain grabbed before then. And so after that, after that hype, incredible match, you tore through and you won that tournament, right? After, after, the, after our, our match, um, I mean, we, the tournament started, uh, we went through uh, endless, endless rounds and stuff, and it just came closer to weight night. I think towards the end, after people saw my skill, a lot of people actually dropped out of the tournament. So Matt DZ actually gave people refunds. Like, there were a lot of people uh, signed up, and then also towards the end, they're like, oh, I, I, there's no chance of me winning. So they, they actually got their money back. So the tournament went down, at, like, in numbers. But yeah, um, I think uh, during that TG4, uh, I tore through the whole entire tournament. I mean, there were there were good players. Like uh, there were these guys called the Vallejo guys. They were Filipino players, and they were also really good. They run there, and I beat most of the players. Um, and then I end up fighting Matt Deasy in the tournament. Same thing. It's corner area. He'd go to the side, shoot lasers, camp the crap out of me, and I'd grab him. After I got him, he died. He would be dead. And uh, yeah, and then here the the last match was me versus Vociferous. I mean, I took Sam out in my tournament too. I took out Sam again, so he wasn't even in the finals. And Reciferous, it was uh, in the end, it was me versus Reciferous. Yeah. And then what, what happened with the, at, the, at that final moment? At that moment, I, I knew I could beat Reciferous because he came down and, and we did a money match. And I was just like thinking in my head, like like what Matt Deasy was saying, like there's little chance of you winning TG4. And I I, I wanted to prove him wrong. I, I really did. So I just. I mean, it was crazy. Like, I've never been to a tournament uh, scene in my life. It was the first tournament ever, and it was like 2 a.m. when the tournament was. It was me versus Reciferous, 2 a.m., and um, it, everybody was tired. I mean, uh, the hype was like almost gone. It was just, like the last match of the day. It was me versus Reciferous, and I I ended up beating him. I ended up beating Reciferous. No, it was incredible. You were incredibly tired, obviously, at this time. But did did you like feel like I'm the best, like at that moment. Like, how did that right happen? when I beat Reciferous at TG4, I, I'm not gonna lie, it felt good. Like I felt like, like, like I proved something. Like, like I could, I could, I could actually be the best at this game. Like I felt like, I felt like, like definitely was the best in the East Coast, or not the East Coast, the West Coast at the time. I didn't know anything about the East Coast, but as far as like the West Coast scene, uh, I figured, I, I thought I was the best. At that time, right, that's when I beat Reciferous because uh, what Matt Deasy said is like, um, just because you won money matches doesn't mean anything. You have to actually win tournaments to be considered good, to be the best. Nice, nice. And you did like, like the on the on Smash Boards. Were they talking about this? Like the next day, like did Deasy give you the respect? Yeah, actually, after the whole entire thing was over, I think I made a little close to seven hundred dollars that night. That that tournament, it was. For a kid who's 16 years old, making $700 in one, one day is, is humongous. I mean, I, I remember, I remember as if it was like actually only yesterday, like I remember the trip home. Um, obviously, you know, I covered for expenses for everybody who actually uh, drove up to TG4 with me. And then after that, like that week, like I was eating like a king. But the first, the first like $700 I got for Smash tournaments, like I, 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 I used it all within a week just for food. Just like food alone, I hate like a kid. Like I was, I mean, I was a little kid, uh, a, kid a little kid with money who who liked food. 
So I was eating lots of desserts, food, whatever, top $50 like steak plates and whatnot every day. Oh man, that was, that was so good. Right, right. And did you like, you know, from that, did you start to go on and like, you know, look for more, um, like what was the immediate aftermath of that, did, um, of having one and essentially being the best? Well, after TG4, I mean, Smashboards was exploding like crazy. Basically everybody was saying, how did this kid win? He's never heard of Smash Bros. before. He's never heard of any advanced techniques. He came out of nowhere and he took a, a major tournament, like the biggest tournament at the time. Like they were, they were. Everybody was like, "How is this possible? This is like a, this is like a, this is like a, one of those stories where like the, in, the, the impossible did it. Like you know, it's not. It's very rare for someone to actually come out of nowhere and take a first major tournament. It's like someone in tennis who 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 is a pro and in college, whatever, going to the first Grand Slam and winning it, pretty much is like the same thing. Um, and they were they were pretty much like Smash was exploding, and and, and Matt Deasy actually gave me respect afterwards. He was like, yeah, he did it. He came up, and there was a lot of uh, excuses about Reciferus saying that oh he could have taken Ken because um, it was like 2 a.m. and he was tired. He wasn't playing at his full potential. But you know, people argued like, dude, the guy drove from SoCal, and it was also 2 a.m. for him. And he was also tired, so you can't you can't use that as an excuse, or or John, as people would say later. <laughs> yeah, but people weren't saying that term. No, they weren't. They weren't saying no Johns at that time. They were just like, oh, you can't use that excuse. You can't. You can't. You can't blame it on how tired Reciferus was. It was. It was late for everybody. You know, it's you have to have the mentality to go in, into um, the finals and 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 not worry about you know anything else but the game at the time. So. So I actually got some respect from uh, Matt Easy and whatnot from that tournament. And um, pause this for a second. We got some water. Um, Do you need any more water? I think I have some here. I forget which one is mine though. Oh, the sparklet one. This one? Yeah. Okay, cool. So if you need more water, just oh, some more water outside. Um. Uh, so the. You came home a victor, um, and did, you, did your parents, like, how did they react to you winning $700? <laughs> Actually, my parents really never supported me playing video games, especially at a competitive level. They would always tell me, like, there's no way you're going to be the best, the best at this game. You know, there's always going to be someone better than you. And I, I'm one of those guys who want to prove people wrong. Like, if you, if you tell me I can't do, any, I can't do that, I, I want to do it. I, I, want, I want to show you that I can do it. So when I came home from TG4 and I showed them a lot of cash, they're like, oh, that's beginner's luck. That's beginner's. There's no way you can win another tournament. There's, there's no way. And I was like, I did it. I mean, I can't believe I did it, but I did it. And I came home uh, a victor. And actually, I had the, the belt to prove you know, that I won that tournament that uh, was been handed down from you know, TGs to TGs to the winners. So. Nice, nice. You're going to have to cut to that as soon as we... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the uh, did you after that did you start bi weeklies around here to kind of like build up the community or, or was that more of like later on? Um, no, uh, SoCal um, didn't have a Smash community uh, at the time. Um, it was mostly NorCal, and I didn't start bi weeklies till later. Um, I think it was around two thousand three or four okay. that I started bi weeklies. That's after I think it's around the time where the most tournament happened, which is the tournament I went to after TG four. Or, or was it TG5? I think it was TG4. So, so by weeks didn't happen until around the most time. Yeah. Now, most three is the one that I'm thinking of that yeah. you and Isaiah were like the most amazing epic battle ever. Yeah. There were the two other most beforehand that you went to those? No, I didn't go to those. Most okay. three is the first most okay. tournament I gotcha. went to. Gotcha. So, so we'll, we'll talk about that one in a little bit. Because that was 2005. It, like, yeah, okay. The 2005 is when I started by weeks then. Yeah, okay. Like the end of 2004. Gotcha. Because I remember. Hugs went to that tournament, and he went to two bye weeks before he went to that tournament. And I was trying to prepare him for that. Okay. Yeah. So. So the um, after this, you know, you're getting a lot of trash talk. Uh, right, it, was this the beginning of kind of the West Coast versus East Coast rivalry? <laughs> yeah. After TG four, like all these players on the West Coast were declaring me like the best player on the West Coast. The East Coast had no thing about. It. They had their own tournaments on the East Coast, but. Matt DZ promoted TG4 as being like the national tournament at the time, and then East Coast players were going in there. I mean, trash like like 
uh, started trash, uh, trash talking already, saying, oh, you guys aren't good at all. You guys use items. That, that, if you guys want to be good, play FD, uh, FD four stock, no items, you know, brought out without, without items. And, you know, there was a constant debate about the West Coast versus East Coast about items and no items and stuff. But originally when I was playing, um, uh, when I first started playing Smash Melee, I'd, I'd turn off the items and play, you know, fair stages, like neutral stages. I wasn't, and I didn't start playing with items until um, I met Matt Deasy and his crew. Yeah. yeah. And the, um, and that, I guess that was a, a pretty big bone of contention going into, like, TG5, I guess would be the next big one that came in. Was that, that was the first, like, real national when you had East Coast players coming over to the West Coast, right? Yeah, actually, a after TG4, um, Matt DZ released a DVD about it, and most of the East Coast players actually bought a, cop a, copy, a copy or two of uh, the DVD, and they saw the skill level on the West Coast, and they were just, they were laughing at us. They're like, oh, look at him. He's an idiot. All he does is move back and forth, like he was dashing back and forth. You know, why would he dash back and forth when he can wave dash? And, you know, I was still new in the community. I didn't wave dash at the time, and all I know... All I knew how to do was dash back and forth, and, and, and that eventually became uh, dash dancing. But um, I, I remember, like, uh, uh, Wes and his buddies in DA, when DA was around, um, they, would, they would laugh at me, and they would uh, go on AIM and, and talk to me on AIM and be like, oh, you suck so much. All you do is dash left and right. That's stupid. Why are you doing that? And I would tell them, uh, this is my game style, dude. That's how I play. But um, I didn't meet any of those guys till TG5, and that was actually the first, um, I think, national tournament where um, there were Midwest players, East Coast players, and West Coast players. Nice, nice. Now, the, um, you had a, some, someone there who would be, I guess, become one of your, like, not really a rival for you because you always you know, seem to come out on top, but um, as in... This is your, you, you fought as in a TG5, uh, five, right? Uh, yes, I did. Yeah. So describe a little bit about TG5. And Actually, TG5, when it first happened, um, everyone was pretty hyped since, you know, there was going to be East Coast players, the best East Coast players at the time, best Midwest players at the time, all going to one place, and Matt was hosting it, TG5. Um, and it was kind of funny because, um, you know, there's a lot of shit talk going on on Smash Boards. Um, and right about the time when I became the best on the West Coast, um, a player emerged from the East Coast named Azin Zegnite, and he actually emerged pretty much a little after me as the, the best on the East Coast. Like he was, he took out like DA and all this stuff, and he actually was going to the tournament. So um, people on the West Coast was basically debating like who's better, Ken or Azin, Ken or Azin, and this tournament was gonna resolve that all. Nice. And so they, and this was, you know, they were obviously coming into here like debating the whole items thing, but when you finally got down to it and you were playing. Did you, you, how did that, how did that shape up between you and Nazan? I, th I remember when Azin first came over, I, I, mean, <laughs> I wanted to like, hey, how, how's it going? I wanted to go up and talk to him and stuff and, and like, and talk to him, but I mean, he was just a, a different character. Like, he was pretty silent, you know, he wasn't pretty much outspoken like I was. And I'd go up to him, he wouldn't say much, you know, he'd let his friend Andin, who was at the time, talk for him. And every single time I talked to Andin, he was like, you're not going to be Azin, he's the best. I'm not gonna be Azin. He's amazing. Like every single time I talked to Andin about Azin, he would just like constantly brag and brag about how good Azin was. And I actually fought uh, Andin in the tournament my second round, and he was a Jigglypuff player. And I, I beat Andin. And Andin is one of those type of guys who who doesn't have a, a facial expression. Like no matter how he is, it's the same facial expression. Happy, sad. Uh, uh, to the point where he's like tired or whatever same facial expression he, he'd, he'd have like the best poker face ever if he played poker so I beat Andin and then I said after I beat him I'm like so you think I'm pretty good I asked him that and he's like no cause cause you use items and I was like okay well I still beat you but it's like but there's uh, items on so um, uh, I, I remember TG yeah after that um, you know the tournament went on and on and uh uh, I, I think Isaiah ended up fighting Azin at that tournament, and Isaiah beat Azin. Like, Isaiah ended up beating Azin. Captain Falcon versus, uh, I think it was Sheik. And, like, the whole West Coast was, like, cheering like crazy. Because Isaiah was a NorCal, and he, um, he, came, he actually got better. I mean, at the first TG4, he wasn't good at all, but then he got better. 
and then at TG5 it was like my first time actually teaming with Isaiah too. And before TG5, I actually invited Isaiah down for two weeks at my house so we can practice for TG4 because we were, you know, partners. I didn't work well with my brother because we played too similar and we'd get in each other's way because it was team attack on. So I ended up teaming with Isaiah. And I think Isaiah, actually, I don't think I fought Azen at TG5, to be honest. I fought, I think Reciferous beat Azen and, and Isaiah took out Azen. So I never fought Azen at TG5. So I ended up winning the tournament fighting, I think it was, I don't, I don't remember who got second, I think it was Reciferous that got second. Was that Reciferous got second at TG5? Okay, so I ended up fighting Reciferous again at TG5 and I ended up beating Reciferous again. <laughs> but I remember, I, I think it was, I, I got first, Reciferous got, Reciferous got second, Isaiah got third. Yeah. And then Azen got fourth. But after TG5, there was like nothing really changed about who was the best in, in the, uh, in, in, in the states like nothing changed because the west coast would be like oh our, our top three players got got top three over here what's up east coast and uh east coast would be like oh you guys use items so you guys want a real tournament comes to the east coast yeah yeah, yeah. let's back up a little bit because i did i forgot about that that you had um yeah isaiah came down and he stayed with you for a while and how, what did you think about isaiah when you first met him i actually met isaiah at tg4 and he was a Smash 64 player at the time. He didn't even play Melee at all. And I talked to him online before that, and he actually money matched me at Smash 64. And I thought I was really good there. And I was like, you know what? I, I, don't, I don't know I should money match you. You're probably going to lose. And Zay was like, no, no, let's just money match. So actually when TG4 came, I started playing uh, 64, and I saw Isaiah help. Uh, he's playing 64, and he was, he was amazing. I was like, oh, shit. I, I, I probably... I probably uh, can't beat this guy. So I was like, you know what, Isaiah? Let's just cancel the money match. He's like, what? How come? I was like, I'm not feeling it. So I told him, like, no money match. So we played 64, and he, he kicked the crap, you know, beat, beat the crap out of me in 64. But, you know, there was no money match. But after that, you know, um, I was talking to Isaiah about uh, Melee and stuff online, that I think he has potential to be good because he's really good at 64. I was good at 64, and it carried over. So I told Isaiah that, hey, you should come down. Um, two weeks before TG5, and I'll house you. We can practice, become partners, and I think we could be really good. Nice, nice. And how was that, like, being in close quarters with this guy who, you know, you, you knew he was amazing, but maybe didn't necessarily know as much about his personality? It was, it, it was when I first saw Isaiah, when I first picked Isaiah up, it was, he was totally I, normal. Like, he was, he was really respectful, you know, everything. I said, okay, these are what you can do, what you can't do around the household. He'd help, help me out with the household. Um, he would actually help out a lot with the house and stuff around then. And then we just practiced, played a lot of Smash. Like, he was, he was really, very technical. I mean, I learned a lot of things from him. He learned a lot of things from me. Um, I think one night we actually even stayed up, and uh, he, was, he was, like, uh, shooting a laser gun at me, and I was trying to power shield all the laser guns. Because I, I guess we were trying to power shield things because uh, we were practicing with items and stuff. And we trained a lot. Like, eventually we became, like, really good um, uh, training partners, kind of like sparring, you know. Yeah. Yeah. We would uh, grow off each other. Interesting. Yeah, so you really kind of started to grow as and, and gel as a team. Yeah. Um, when he first came down, we actually, like, discussed our teamwork and what he should do. And he would give me pointers on what I should do. and. And yeah, we would practice much, and we we'd have a lot of people to practice down here against, mostly computers and whatnot. But uh, um, mostly our strategy was um, he would pick Captain Falcon, I'd pick Marth, and I had a really good grab game ever since you know I first played DZ. Since I would <laughs> knew that if I grabbed DZ, I, I would be able to hit him. So I would have a really good grab game. So in teams, I would go around grabbing a lot of people, <laughs> just like being the grabby. The graviton, I think they call it, and just grab people, and he'd run in and knee them. So that was like our whole um, strategy back then. Just like I'd grab them, and he'd knee them. <laughs> that's awesome. That's, yeah. that's cool. Yeah. Um, did you, and uh, really quick, just to touch on it, because I don't think this, I uh, think a lot of people know about that. Uh, Isaiah didn't play Falcon right away, right? He didn't, for, at least initially. Oh, yeah. A lot of people don't know this, but I think at TG4 and around TG5, um, Around there, there was a player, I think his name was Stitson or something, in Washington, and he was the first Captain Falcon who actually spammed these. 
So when Isaiah saw him like play Captain Falcon, Isaiah got a little inspired, and he took Captain Falcon to the next level. So that's how it actually started. Interesting. So I mean, I, I think Isaiah was the father of Captain Falcon, but there was one guy before that who deserves a little credit yeah. on on um, evolution, um, evol <laughs> evolutionizing uh, Captain Falcon yeah. as far mm -hmm. as like the knee the knee things the knee things. That, that goes on. Cool, cool. Um, so the, you know, that's this. Awesome. Just look at it every day, dude. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> Some will have uh, accomplished it, but. Yeah. Okay. That is actually Thunder's uh, Jack Garden badge that he gave me. I don't even know what happened to mine. Thunder's like. I think something happened to mine. He's only had mine. It's only it's it's own stand over here. Nice. I'm about to take the first trophy ever, like. <laughs> We actually hosted a place with a lot of money too. It didn't turn out too well though.